set to expire on uh, the 21st of this month, but they had to do another extension until uh, December 21st. Again, according to the, the emergency preparedness law, it has to be done in 30 day increments. It would be easier you know, if, if they're able to do it longer, but we have to follow the, the letter of the law and, and uh, it's only 30 days. Obviously, the state of emergency is a terminology that you know, we have to use, and that's the way it is uh, within the law. You know, but what we really are in is a public health emergency. All the measures we took into effect since, uh, since last March, some have been modified, some have been removed. But for the most part, uh, what it does is, is it keeps the directives that were passed by the task force in effect, and they, and they carry you know, basically the, the force of, of, of a law in, in the community to ensure that uh, whatever safety precautions are required you know, by by businesses and by organizations and, and, and community members as a whole are maintained. And that's done through you know, Gunawage law, through emergency preparedness law. So it's, it's a great tool that, that we need to use uh, so that we're not relying on anybody else's jurisdiction to do what, know what we got to do. You know, and we said from the beginning, even though the directives are, are enforceable you know, by law, I mean, that's, that's never our first priority. Uh, we all know there was some instances in the past of, of enforcement uh, issues, but moving forward, that's the thing we want to avoid as much as possible. But uh, when it comes to the greater good of the community and overarching responsibility of everybody, if no enforcement is, is required, and then, then the peacekeepers have a job to do. But one of our, 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 our factors that uh, it's a significant factor in what we decide in the community is, is looking at those numbers. What's happening in, in Quebec, you know, more importantly, what's happening in the greater Montreal area, which geographically we're, we're included within the greater Montreal area and assess what's happening, you know, there it plays a major role. So if the cases are out of control, you know, in, in those areas, we have to consider that very, uh, very strongly in our, in, in our decisions because we don't live in a bubble, unfortunately, right? And, and our people do, you know, go outside the territory for essentials and, and to do what they got to do. And uh, certain children know to go to school outside the territory. Uh, so we got to keep that in mind uh, and, and look at that closely. Uh, also see what measures uh, they're taking and seeing if they're being effective or not. Because we always want to try to put in measures in Gunawaga that we feel are going to actually have an impact and, and, know, and not just take measures for the sake of taking measures. And I think from what we've seen for the most part in Quebec, uh, they took strong measures going back uh, almost eight weeks, now seven, eight weeks ago. So the numbers are not going in the right direction. That's why when we looked recently at, in, in Gunawaga, you know, with the measures that we changed last week regarding some of the um, allowing visitations in, in, in homes uh, to households. Uh, we considered what's happening in Gunawaga versus what's happening outside, but we kind of made a, a, a assumptions based on you know, medical information, mental health information, and, and made it a, a decision based on what Gunawaga requires. And that's, that doesn't reflect what, what Quebec is doing. That's in part because things are, were faring fairly well in the community, so we felt confident in taking that step. But again, it's an ongoing assessment, you know, and, and how things will be next week and the week after, we, we can't say at this point, but we want to give a little bit of relief, you know, to the community to at least have small visitations amongst, you know, family or friends in, in a safe way to relieve some of that anxiety, some of that pressure. Actually, we're, we're looking at several options and ideas on, on, on how you know, Christmas can be done uh, in a safe way, obviously depending on where we are in a few weeks down the road. But definitely we understand people want to be with family, they want to be with friends on the holiday season. And using maybe a similar concept how we did with Halloween, looking at you know, maybe having some measures in place attached with a whole bunch of recommendations. You know, and it seemed to be fairly successful you know in the community looking at some similar concepts to that for, for christmas but obviously it's it's uh, it's got to be measured because uh more people that gather more people that you have contact with if somebody in that circle is, is has covid it's much easier to spread so we got we got to balance that out especially because you know obviously holiday season that's when you want to be with your parents and your grandparents and, and that sort of thing and we just got to be uh, extra careful and we will be coming out with some formal recommendations very soon